the pleasure here uh, to present as a first uh, technical paper, uh, a paper from Manuel, which is a, a research associate uh, PhD student uh, at the chair of Network Architecture and Services of the Technical University of Munich. So the paper that he's gonna present is the advantage of match action table updates from within programmable software display. And Manuel received his Master of Science in Informatics at the Technical University of Munich in 2021. In the same year, he started a PhD uh, at the Chair of Network Architecture and Services. The main research topics are software-defined networking, data frame programming, high-performance packet processing, so all cool stuff here. Uh, of particular interest is a P4 and domain-specific uh, language to program data plane. So uh, with further ado, please, Manuel, feel free to start your presentation. Um, so much looking forward to here. Yeah, thank you, Johnny, for this kind introduction. I'm as told my topic is high performance match action table updates within programmable data planes. Um, yeah. So in data planes in general, state keeping is a very essential part for like many applications. For instance, it can be used for firewalls, for intrusion detection, to implement routing protocols, or for TCP connection tracking, for instance. And in P4, there are two ways where a state can be managed. The first one are registers. This is a common way in P4. However, they are just defined as an extern, so they are um, specific on the underlying hardware architecture and on the underlying model. They come with limited functionality, so they have some um, limited um, width, and also the amount of registers is limited. They do not have any matching support, but can just be accessed through indices and they may also lay fragmented in the memory. Another thing and another option in P4 are tables. The, these have sophisticated matching support, not only exact matching, but also ternary, longest prefix matching ranges, and so on. But they are only changeable by the control plane. And now it would be a nice idea to have also updatable table entries directly within the um, data plane to increase the performance and to also have state keeping directly in the table. And we implemented this for a software target tapas using an H um, ref at ref annotation, which was also proposed some while ago by Mario Baldi. And uh, using this annotation, a parameter can be uh, marked to be a, treated as reference and then also be changed within the action code directly. Tapas is a hardware independent transpiler, transpiling um, P4, P4 code to C. And this code is then linked with the PDK. The DPDK, the Data Plane Development Kit, is a framework bypassing the Linux um, network stack and directly enabling fast packet processing in the user space itself, therefore having a much higher throughput and um, lower latency. DPDK can perform receive side scaling, meaning um, incoming traffic is split according to the five tuple of destination source IPs and ports, and then all um, these are split and matched to several logical cores or threads, which can independently and in parallel process the packets and process the P4 pipeline in Tapas. The idea to having a state or having updatable table entries is not entirely new. So in the portable NIC architecture, which um, now more focuses on P4 on um, NICs, instead of only switches, um, allows adding new table entries on lookup misses which is also some kind of um, updates of the tables, but uh, the PNA is still in preparation, it's not um, released right now. In Pensando SmartNix, there's nowadays the option of so-called flexible match action tables, allowing also table updates via write-back table fields. They do not adapt the language itself, but pre-process target-specific annotations and translate them to target-specific externs, allowing the write-back to the table. And in flow plays, um, also some state is managed in programmable data planes. They rely on a flow context table matching the flow to um, indices, which are then used to access to registers. In our solution, we directly write to the table instead of registers and can therefore keep state in the table itself. So just as an overview, how uh, this currently works or in software defined networking we usually have the data in the control plane as a split architecture and tapas these two are different processes running asynchronously and um, can exchange messages messages through unsocket 
So if a packet comes into the pipeline, it is first parsed, then some match action can be performed, and at the end it's deparsed again and sent out. And during this match action, um, lookups can be performed to the table, and then um, yeah, the, the headers are matched and some specific actions are executed. And if some entry wants to be should be changed, right now there's only the possibility to use digests this way. A digest is sent to the controller. The controller reacts to it, either denies or accepts the update digest, and then sends back some message again to the data plane process and telling, yeah, please update this table entry now. As it can be seen, this has some detour, some overhead for going to the controller. And in Tapas, this, um, yeah, the detour is comparably small or there's a low round trip time because it's a local controller. But if you think of a remote controller scenario, the round trip time would even increase more. Another problem here, as said in, in Tapas, we have two different processes. Therefore, it has to be somehow ensured that this entry was already changed. And this was originally solved by introducing a sleep of one second, with, which renders this um, approach impractical for frequent table updates for containing state. Then we come up with two, two methods to avoid this. The first one we call change method. It's close to the original implementation, but just um, avoids detour over the, control, over the controller. What means close to original implementation? It uses the original timing-based synchronization mechanism involving a sleep time of 200 microseconds, which I will explain in more detail um, right afterwards. And because of the sleep time, the performance, as we will see later, is also not so good. So we come up with another method calling the pointer. So in this way, we, we look up here, not the value itself, but uh, we, we get back the pointer of the table entry and using this pointer, we can then directly change the table entry itself. So as said, um, it, yeah, the double, so Tapas uses some double buffering mechanism to access the tables. This um, works the following way. If some lookup is performed, um, at first um, the active replica pointer is followed, meaning we have two replicas, both having the same table content. So it's more or less just a copy. And in a lookup, we, we look up the active replica, follow the pointer, and look up the entry right in this active replica. If some entry wants to be changed or be updated, inserted, and so on, um, this change is first done to the currently passive replica, in this case, replica two, meaning and uh, you can access in parallel um, replica one for read access without any locks, without having any um, inconsistent state. Afterwards, um, this active replica pointer has changed. It is slept for 200 microseconds, and then the change is also promoted to the now passive replica, in this case, replica one. Um, as it can be seen, changing the entry using the pointer would not be compatible with it. Since we, we get the pointer to only one replica, this change would not be promoted to the other. And this could then lead to inconsistencies, which we have to fix right afterwards. Okay, for the evaluation to understand them better, I just quickly show our topology and setup. We have a load generator using Moonchen to generate traffic. And the, the goal is with each packet, which is processed at the device under test, one table entry is changed. So the load generator generates packets specifying the key and the new value of the updated table entry. The device under test or tapas then um, performs this update and sends back the old value. In this way, we have a read and a write operation with every packet and an update also with every packet. We use four byte key and value size. Yes. And also we wanted to measure the worst case scenario. Therefore, we have to first quickly think about optimizations which could be done by the cache. So the cache has the advantage to be accessed um, faster than the main memory, but also has a lim more limited capacity. So for this, at least these two um, major optimizations are performed by caches. The first one um, lead loading whole cache lines. So if you access an array, um, you can profit from accessing them iteratively. So more than just one entry is loaded in the cache. Also, the cache may do some heuristic-based prefetching, guessing what entries could be um, accessed next and already prefetch them to the cache in case of some spare resources. Okay, and now we, as I said, we wanted to measure the worst case scenario. So therefore we maximize the cache misses that we have to work directly on the memory that we have read and writes to the main memory, not only to the cache. 
Therefore, the key for accessing the table is pseudorandomly selected within the table size. And also, we ensured that the table size is large enough to exceed the cache size so that not all of the table can be stored in the cache, but we have also access to the main memory. Okay, let us now compare our two methods uh, and for comparison, the original digest method. Um, the change method is uh, set has some rather bad performance, only allowing 3.4 um, thousand packets per second and having a rather high median latency and high variance here, lat latencies um, around 322 microseconds. This is cause of the introduced wait time because it relies on the underlying uh, synchronization mechanism and yeah, that's getting to rather bad performance. Using the pointer itself, um, leading to rather good performance, we, we can hit lighter line rate here and also have a relatively small median latency of only 26.5 microseconds. And also the latency is constant. We can see that there's no much performance overhead in comparison to just reading. So we can really fast update our table entries with every packet. However, as said, this is not compatible with the synchronization mechanism. But because it performs so good, um, we decided to go with this method and afterwards change the synchronization method to be compatible with this method. And only for comparison, the digest method um, yeah, would allow less than one packet per second because of this long um, waiting time. And just for, for interest, um, we ignored the sleep and then we come up with around 4,000 um, packets per second. Otherwise, um, we get an out of memory error because for every message sent to the digest, some error memory has to be allocated. Just a small recap about the table structure we uh, presented before. And using the pointer method, we now have to ensure two types of consistencies. The first one is the insert update consistency. As said, if we directly change um, an entry, it would not be compatible if this mechanism then switches the table replica. Um, for that, we, we switched or we, we turned out this um, old mechanism and replaced it through only uh, through another mechanism, only relying on one table replica or copy and using, therefore, uh, some built-in DPDK features to also get log-free um, consistency with only having one table, thus enabling our pointer method to be working. The next um, consistency which has to be ensured is uh, between packets, so inter-packet race conditions have to be avoided meaning if we have um, if we process several packets in parallel at different cores and two of them are accessing the same entry and would both write to them or read the same entry this could um, yeah get to race conditions and for that we come up with an uh, with a lock which comes with every entry it's a spin lock which is acquired before the action is then executed and released afterwards and this uh, this way we ensure that only yeah, one core can access one um, entry at the same time and thus avoiding inter-packet race conditions. Okay, now let's come quickly to our evaluation. So at first I said for the insert update consistency, we replaced the old um, tapas mechanism, the double buffering through the PDK one. And we can see for different table sizes. So for, for small table sizes, the throughput um, um, is only a little bit less than the original one. And for higher table sizes, it's even better or nearly the same. So in general, as we can see, so they both scale up with the number of cores used, if we see the throughput here, and the performance overhead is really small, so it's nearly the same performance. But since only, on, only one replica is um, required, we can now change entries using the pointer method, which was the most performant one. And to avoid these inter-packet data races, we included some optional lock here called synced. And you can see again, um, for having many table entries, um, the performance scales up with the number of cores, has an overhead of about 10%. Yeah, and if having only one entry, this wouldn't scale, but if, since every um, uh, yes, since every core would then exist the same entry and they would lock themselves every time, only one can perform some action and just the overhead increases for waiting, there would be no more performance gain. But it scales good for for the you know, for having more than one table entry, which is the usual case. It has to be noted here that this lock is only necessary if you want to access global state or global entries. So when if they would be flow dependent, um, the the whole table would be partitioned towards the flows, and then 
because we have the split of the receive side scaling, one core would only access one partition of the table and not from the, from the other partitions and therefore no log would be required at all. So to come to a conclusion, um, we implemented the writable table entries in Tapas using the href annotation. And therefore, and with this, we had a comparable performance to only reading entries, which shows that the approach is very well suited for frequent um, state or table updates. The synchronization and storage design is configurable using a config annotation. Um, then it's left to the developer whether he or she thinks the logs is needed or which, which scenario you want to choose. The inter-packet races are avoided using per-entry logs and our source code is available on GitHub. Furthermore, not presented to the lack of time today, um, we came up with some more efficient uh, storage design and built some cache fitting models for them. And for that, I would refer to our paper. Then I want to thank you for your attention. And now I think we have time for some questions. Um, <clears throat> that was a very, very interesting presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Mara. Uh, yeah. let, let's start a little bit with some question. Uh, there is one question from Fernando. Let me read it. So uh, um, basically, yeah, the, the fact that you want to do table updates is great but uh, uh you know you do this in software and the more challenging problem is uh, how to do that on a fast hardware especially hardware that process you know hundreds of gigabits of terabits traffic mm -hmm. so do, do, do you think that any of those methods can be considered as a starting point for a version that can be able to run on such fast data planes or you know what's your thoughts here okay so a basic difference usually um, between software data planes and hardware data planes is in software we have a run to completion um, paradigm so one one packet is um, the whole pipeline is processed for for each packet before the next packet starts and hardware we usually have some pipelining scheme and meaning we have several packets in the pipeline at the same time and the, the performance is gained up to having yeah more more than one pipeline step thus um, the 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 locking mechanisms and on the thinking about um, which state can be accessed without concurrent access is a little bit different um, than to uh, having run to completion. But I guess so. I think um, also in hardware we have often some some cache hierarchy. It was presented, I guess, by also Mario Baldi some some time ago. So we, we could have different caches uh, caches for each pipeline and have some cache hierarchy built up there. So I guess having some to update some table entries using a pointer could be also a good starting point there. But we have then to ensure somehow um, specifically on the target, um, deciding on the target, how we, we can hinder any inconsistent data accesses when also writing to them. Kind of makes sense. Thank you. Uh, I, I have another question before uh, moving to the next talk. Um, so. Sure. I am a big fan of updating tables from within the uh, the data plane because I think they, it opens up a lot of uh, new cool application potentially. But w when I was uh, um, listening to your presentation, I started to think about, uh, uh, so uh, if you think about how you will do this in P4 now, as you said, you send a digest, you know, or, you know, in the a, in a original open flow era where you send like, uh, you know, a, a packet to a controller, right? So, but now if you update the things within the data plane, basically you, you start having problems of, uh, you, you, you briefly touch upon that, but you start really to have problem of uh, uh, consistency and coherency between uh, what the control plane, so I'm talking about the controller, really, here somewhere, not just the switch CPU has an idea on what is happening in the in the network and what the switch is doing, right? So, and I think maybe a 10 gigabit might be overcome this, but in in the moment that you that you go at a faster speed, especially if you if you if you start having some very you know heavily stateful type of processing, then this might be a problem. So do, do you think uh, this might be an open area of research or something that you know we you know it's a it's a promising things to look into, or do you think some of the things that you already starting uh, doing might be might be applied in this context as well? 
So I would I would say you can maybe split between the two problems. So there might be state which has to be um, yeah um, handled or controlled by the controller for all of the devices in the network, but there might be also some state which is only needed locally for the specific switch or the specific uh, NIC, for instance. And in this case, I wouldn't see a big problem here for the consistency. If you have say, say okay, this part is only locally stated, then you don't have to ensure consistency within the whole network. This may be, for instance, yeah, if you have some some switch which is which is reacting uh, reacting to the number of packet it's received or something like that. So if having only local state, uh, so splitting into local state and network wide state would would um, reduce this problem you said. I I guess that kind of makes sense to me. Thank you very much. Um, just for everyone to know, uh, uh, so we have uh, three talks today. But after the three talks, there is going to be more time to have a question with all the all the authors. So you know, prepare your question also for the talk of Manuel if he, if uh, you know something comes into your uh, your mind. 